going to your story just a little bit just an overview yeah um, just quick I'll and spend too much we'll, time we'll get into the work how did it all begin <laughs> such a good question always right um, so uh, I have a background in molecular biology and um, spent most of my life um, in the science world um, in one capacity or another whether it was just in nature being a scuba instructor or whether it was actually studying biology and then getting a degree and um, then spending time in the biotech world. Um, and then at one point, I think I'd always been interested in the metaphysical side of things, you know, read the Carlos Castaneda books, the Dan Millman, you know, always reading and curious and doing yoga and things like that, but never really diving into it until I was about 39. and this is probably um, correlated with my Chiron return or Saturn return or one of those, <laughs> one of those things. I'm, I'm not too up on astrology, but I know it's influencing things. Um, but anyway, it was um, around that time that I reconnected with an old friend who happened to be a psychic medium. We grew up together. And so I trusted her. And even though I was the staunch atheist who was really not too connected to that side of my life or spirituality, um, I knew that she was somebody I could depend on. So I went and had a reading with her. Totally blew my mind. I couldn't believe how amazingly psychic and intuitive she was. So um, I wanted to know how she did it. So I really came at it from this place of I want to be a psychic, you know, because it's another thing that I want to know how to do that I don't know how to do. I don't understand this. I know that there's this something there, but I didn't understand it. So I started reading and reading and reading and started taking classes. And the next thing I knew, I was like, once you get on that bus, you don't get off, do you? I think we all know that. <laughs> once you get on the bus, you are hooked, right? So um, especially with my science mind, I just wanted to take it apart. I wanted to understand energy. I wanted, wanted to understand the quantum realm. I wanted to understand all of this fascinating information that is available to all of us, but isn't really widely talked about in everyday life or culture or in the science world the science world is so reductionist materialistic right they don't talk about this they're all afraid of it for some reason they're they're afraid of their theories being proven wrong so they really avoid it so i hadn't really had a lot of exposure to it apart from books that i had sort of in a fantasy realm right so then bringing it all together was really uh, good for me and as i was studying different modalities it was while studying something called body talk that i really popped up into a new level of connection and started to connect to a guides of beings that are, um, I call them the mantis. And um, they started informing me about my sessions and the people I was working with and taking it to a deeper level and um, connected to lots of other guides. And I just began spending more and more time in that rarefied quantum realm. And the more I did, the more I began to understand my true nature, the nature of the universe, um, why, what I'm here for, what we're all here for. And and that's pretty much how it all unfolded for me. And so that's um, my practice came out of that. Out of, actually, out of that too, I developed vibrational genetics, which is the modality that I practice. Um, it's influenced by a lot of different modalities, but really it's rooted in this information that I keep getting from my guides about using sound and light-coded sound frequencies to shift DNA and to bring DNA into a harmonic that is elevated at a new octave that uh, helps people to um, step into and exist in that quantum realm, that helps people drop the density of emotional baggage and emotional imprints that are layered into our energy fields from not even just this lifetime, but many lifetimes and even future lifetimes influencing us in this here and now moment. And just allowing all of that to let go, step into that potential and um, really give people that view into that space of potential so that they can move forward and start having some fun while they're here <laughs> because after all <laughs> we should be having fun while we're here because we chose to come here and that's a big part of it so I think that gets forgotten sometimes too and I like to bring that back in 
Absolutely, dying one. Absolutely. I mean, we're we're here, you know, to do a job, but no one said that it had to be a slog, right? Oh God, I'm a no. Man. And and <laughs> that's the beauty of the quantum realm. It's like the ridiculousness of all of this is just apparent in that place, and that's what I love about it too. It's just uh, we get to just let go of all the meaning we've placed on everything and and um, interact with it in an entirely different way. Absolutely. You know what I find so interesting about all this stuff. Uh, especially when it comes to healing the body or healing the emotional body is it's all right. We've got all the tools we need and we've been using those tools for years, our voice, our yeah. frequency, our consciousness, you know, our thoughts, they you know, right here, right here. And I'm just going through, I've got a client whose husband's dying of cancer. And then my daughter rings me up, you know, oh, just, Snowy's mum just died of cancer. She's like, people are just dropping off left, right and center with this whole sure. cancer thing. And they're inside the mainstream system and they're just being kind of tortured by the mainstream system, expensive drugs. Uh, and here we are, we've got, we've got all the tools we need right here, sitting on the couch, having a cup of tea, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, which is kind of funny because you had to study for years to realize that, you know, frequency. So do you want to go into yeah. a little bit about what the mantis, who the mantis are? Um, it kind of seemed freaky a long time ago. A friend of mine, Ananara, said, ah, oh, there's this giant prey mantis looking being called Dr. Lawfin and he comes to heal you <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Like, <laughs> I'm like, giant prey mantis, eh? Right. Yeah, it yeah. seems totally crazy. But now there are so many people out there talking about the mantis, the mantis, the mantis. So you're one of them. Do you want to like yeah. talk about who they are and what they do? Absolutely, because uh, these beings uh, are really like family to me. I've spent so much time with them and realized that uh, they've been around me since I was a little child, um, probably helped even place me in my family. So um, these beings, to me, they represent them themselves as in the uh, interdimensional fields of the earth and the energy fields of the earth. They work hand in hand, lock and step with the earth. They are basically part of the Earth's vibrational energy field, and they are ancient beings. You know, there are um, certain mantis that are off on the ships and doing things with different um, races, but the group that I work with um, is definitely earthbound. They're here, they're, well, I should say, not earthbound, but they're in the Earth's dimensional fields. They're real really focused on um, helping the earth to heal, to ascend. Um, they, they're here in support of that. Because we're a part of the energy body of the earth, we are not separate from it, but we're part of the whole energy dimension of the earth. They also extend their care and their love and their healing aspects towards us. Um, they see the whole Gaian system like one whole energetic system, right? We've got the earth, we've got the microbes, we've got the plants, the animals, the earth, excuse me, the humans are just one of those aspects. And um, as such, they've been studying, um, they're very, uh, they're very scientific. So I, I understand that probably part of the reason that I was so driven towards understanding DNA and sort of obsessed with it. When I went to college, it was like DNA or bust. I had to get into the lab to study DNA. I just couldn't be, couldn't be any other lab. So I washed dishes for three weeks just so I could be in this lab, right? You know, I knew it was all about DNA. And I know that comes from them because they're genetic masters. They've shown me so much about the DNA, how the DNA is, uh, serves as a portal. Every molecule of DNA serves as a portal into our higher dimensional selves. And they've got this completely sorted out, worked out genetic mastery. And um, they are an amazingly benevolent race of beings. They care deeply for the earth, for humanity, um, for every living thing on it, and um, have really been part architect of this space and mostly support. Um, they've taught me a lot about the microbes as well. I, I worked for a microbiome company for a while, but um, they brought in a whole new dimension of information about the microbes. If Think about it, because we all came from that primordial soup, right? If we all evolved from that primordial soup, um, short of being dropped here from <laughs> some alien race, right? But um, the evolution of the human being is really, it's as if we are a very highly evolved microbe, because that's where we came from. 
So it makes sense that this whole system here is some sort of evolutionary stage of microbe and that the energy and the consciousness of the microbes has a huge impact on our planet. And so the mantis talk a lot about that with me and a lot of the healing that they do is balancing both microbe and human and that interface and interaction between the two. It's a lot about how our genetics manifest itself, how we heal, how we come into balance again with both the earth, the microbes, some energy around us. Oh, I'm just having this uh, vision that um, it's like what you said, like we have the microbiome inside us, inside our gut, you know, we're, we're just a collection of um, bacteria and I don't know what you call these little guys, but we ourselves, like our body is, is a part of the microbiome of the body of Gaia, right? Exactly. So, yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You just take out, you zoom out, and they show me this all the time. They're constantly giving me perspective because, for example, they gave me a great perspective about uh, negative entities or lower vibrational energy beings because for a while this kept coming up in my field and I'd work on people and they'd have entity attachments. And so I, I asked my main guide, Mari, I call her, um, you know, help me understand why are these being so prevalent on the earth right now? Why are there so many of them around? Why am I seeing it everywhere I go? What she explained it to me, she said, the lesson is that they are just like another version of what you would call a parasite or a virus. You know, it's, it's something that's using your energy to live. It's a one-way relationship. It's a being that has lost the ability to generate energy on its own, so it needs to lock into another being in order to survive. It's figured out that that's the way it's going to survive. So she said, it's nothing more than that. It is a being that's using your energy to survive. Think of it like a parasite or a microbe, because she knows I can relate to that. And it's true, actually, that we live in this sea of energy and higher, lower vibrational beings and sometimes we get something stuck to us, but she said, you know, it's just like getting the flu <laughs> and you can get rid of it. How strong is your immune system? How well equipped are you to repel things like that? So I really loved her perspective on that. And I really like the way it's, um, everything is in this energetic soup of Gaia and of our surroundings. And because this is where we chose to be right now, right? And um, it's just amazing how everything can relate back to all those relationships that are present to us on the biological, physical level, and then also in the energetic. Oh, absolutely. I love the way that you put that. Uh, like last night I went to a gonging, a gong session. This people mm -hmm. from um, Port Macquarie came down to Sydney to do some gong. She's been doing it for about 20 years. And God, I felt significantly different after that. Just, whew. I still feel significantly different. It's funny because it was early between 6.30 and 8. And then afterwards I'm like, am I going to eat? Nah, I don't need to eat. But of course I did because I was right around the corner from my favourite vegan restaurant. So I went and got some food. And then this morning I woke up feeling thinner. Like I'm thinking, that's the frequency of the gong? That's really weird. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's the frequency of balance. When your system wow. is balanced, when the microbes are happy, they process the food for you, everything flows through you in a really nice way, and you do feel thinner. It's like, yeah. oh, I don't have stagnation in my body. The energy's moving, the food is moving, everything's flowing, everyone's humming and happy, and things are in order, things are in balance. Okay, so let's get into, um, let's get into how we put ourselves in balance, vibrationally speaking, through our own energy system or through the frequencies that we can emit ourselves. Um, yeah, that's really important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the interesting thing about that and sort of re to rewind that question a little bit or to unpack it a little bit, I would say that um, it's really all about the way that we interact with our electromagnetic environment. We are in this soup of electromagnetic frequencies all the time, right? We've got them coming from the solar flares. We've got them coming from the earth itself. We've got them coming from all the people and the buildings and the places and the plants and the animals around us. And we've got this vibrant electromagnetic energy around us. Sometimes it doesn't feel that great. Sometimes it feels very uplifting and elevates our frequency, but other times it can really pull us down. So for me, the way that we start to really interact with our environment is super important to our healing and to being in balance and to 
really owning our own electromagnetic output and our own electromagnetic processing centers. So um, you really need to take a proactive role in the way that you interact with your electromagnetic environment, which means that you start to really consciously feel into your environment. And um, it's, you know, I think a lot of people say that, but it, it really can't be overstated that um, when you are in your, I think we, we go into unconscious mode a lot where we're just sort of living out our day and then we start to feel kind of bad and we don't really understand why. And we think, oh yeah, you know, that person's energy was really off or I feel like I've got something stuck to me or I'm just having a really crappy day. Um, the anecdote to that is to really stopping a moment and getting really present moment focused and then stepping into the feeling tone of everything around you. The feeling tone is what really informs us of what's happening around us. And the feeling tone is when we, we get quiet, we get centered, and we get present. And then we literally start reaching out and asking the things around us to send us or to open up and send us their energy signature. I mean, it can be everything from the table that you're sitting at to a chair to your dog to the person. Um, you know, and just quietly and silently to yourself, ask for the feeling tone. Because every time you do that, you start to take control of the way that you interact with your environment. You start to participate in your environment. And every time you participate in your environment, you actually become a proactive participant and a person that can actually shift it and alter it in a direction that feels better to you. When we're unconscious, of course, we can't do that because we're no longer in the driver's seat. We're just sort of letting things happen to us. It takes practice to consciously observe your environment and to participate in an active way. And it, it sounds a little bit tedious at first, I think, or that it might be energetic ta energetically taxing. Quite the opposite is true once you get used to doing it. It becomes more of a habit. And it also lends itself to allowing you to pop in and out of that uh, rarefied quantum space that I like to talk about, because um, it's when you start to ask for the feeling tone, then you start to step into that quantum space where you know it's it's the feeling or it's the energy between the object and you, and then it's that space in between that gets created where all the magic happens, right? Where all of the information is. And sometimes we have a lot of perceptions and ideas and presuppositions about things in our field that we don't even realize. You know, we, I have an idea of what my massage table means to me because of the fact that I use it every day for my clients. And I might, it might carry weight or it might carry an emotional charge for me that I don't even really realize until I sit down and start interacting with my massage table, as an example and start feeling how it feels to me. And then if I don't like the way it feels, why is that? And then follow that thread and, and start to ask those questions. Why does the table make me feel that way? What is it, what happened? Oh, right, it was that time that I had that angry person who yelled at me for 20 minutes. And then that didn't actually happen, but <laughs> anyway. But what is the emotional imprint of that? Oh, I see how that happened. Oh yeah, but then when that happened, then I learned the lesson that if I'm going to do sessions, I've got to do it in a certain way so that things like that don't happen. Oh, right. So now I see the value of that experience. So then I can let go of the emotional charge. But it's not until I address it, until I bring it up to the light, that my perception of this simple table can be shifted. And none of that happens until I enter into that space between us and I ask and I open myself up to the information. So for me, that's really the way that um, I start to alter and proactively interact with my energy field. I've got to be engaged. I've got to be um, asking the questions. Yeah. And absolutely. lots of questions. I keep asking the questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything is conscious. We think that just living you know, life, animals, trees, us, but everything, everything is energy and information. It's all conscious. It's all a part of the one infinite creator and we can interact with it. And it's so interesting, you know, when you love the stuff around you, like when you love your car, when you love your bed, when you love your home, yes. 
When yes. you love your body, you interact differently. It serves you better. It interacts differently with you. When you're judging and criticizing something as women, we tend to go, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, look at the wrinkles. We tend to judge our body. And so it interacts differently with us, you know, because our consciousness creates everything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's like what you resist persists. I know it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it, there's a really, there's the, it, for anyone that's read anything about quantum physics, you know that there's this observer effect, right? Mm -hmm. That when we are observing something, it changes the way it behaves. Yeah. There's the classic experiment of the, the light wave or light as a particle or light as a wave. And when it's being observed, it behaves differently. It shifts into being a particle. And when it's not observed, it's a wave. So um, those ex that experiment has been done in many, many different iterations to, pre to prove and reprove that point. Um, but the fascinating thing about it is that it, it absolutely carries weight that when you're observing your environment, then you're interacting with it in this way that, yeah, when you love your car, because every time you're loving something, you put yourself in that field of not only observation, but of care and of gratitude. And then you're in it because you just took it one step further. When you're loving on something, it's the same thing as observing and then sending gratitude. And then that's when it starts to bounce that back towards you and create that harmony that we're looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, I could talk about this stuff all day. Okay. So <laughs> has anyone got any questions? I can hear Penny's little thinking. Penny there is an energy healer. She's been working. We used to live together years ago. She's been working as an energy healer for years. I know that, you know, really get their message heard. They, you know, you made an agreement to come here and work out some density that, you know, you have a collective agreement with them to relieve them of some energy or some trauma that happened that you were all part of in some other form. And um, they take that very seriously. <laughs> and they're going to keep knocking on your door sometimes until that gets worked out. And so doing those kind of deep meditations or stepping into that space and asking those questions of your ancestors, super important. Absolutely. You know, you said um, it, it's affected by consciousness. Everything is affected by consciousness. Everything. Yeah. There's nothing that's not affected by consciousness. There's it's the basis of the universe. <laughs> it is the universe. It's just called consciousness. It's just all it consciousness. And, and uh, we sort of forget that, you know, we think that this stuff is real and fixed and not changeable. And it's all just consciousness. It's all just energy and information. And our consciousness directly influences it whatever it is whether it's the body or our emotions or the earth or the sea or the planet so you know the biggest problem on our planet right now apart from our consciousness and being asleep to the power of our consciousness is what we've done to the planet yes but then we can affect the cleanup of the planet through our consciousness like absolutely like absolutely you, mm -hmm. yeah and the microbes you know it's you know what the um, the mantis often tell me is that because I do worry about the planet and I can you know get stressed and a little worried about it at times. But they've said, don't worry, the planet's going to be fine. The microbes, as soon as you guys are gone, or definitely and not making this footprint in the way that you're making the footprint now, the way that you're not behaving in the way she, they've said it's going to heal very quickly because the microbes can come in and modulate tremendous amounts of waste and clean it up as well as um, earth itself. Earth has its own systems. You know, the plants will overgrow things that need to be overgrown. It'll just get swallowed up in the earth and pushed over. Um, so it may take many, many years, but it will happen. The earth will be fine. We may not be in this version of ourselves or we may not be here the way we are right now because of the destructive nature of our humanity but um the earth certainly will be okay yeah and she's told me that many many times so i, I do <laughs> take that to heart and it makes me feel a little better because i do worry about it yeah okay any more questions anybody realm of potential that's yeah. your invitation to step into letting go of any beliefs or ideas that you have preconceived about their reactions towards you and what you're expecting them, their behavior towards you or their, is it towards you or is it your, yeah, no. Your I'm, and, it's, and it's true. I have actually really, really just come to this place of, I'm just going to hold this light, you know, when I'm with them exactly. and totally trust that, that they also have the power, you know, and I love what you said there about that, 
frequency and like, you know, really being aware as a, as a healer, you know, clearing your own lens so that you're really yes. just holding this open space for grace to come through. And I've found right. since shifting into that, there's actually much more receptivity, you know, but I'm not, I'm not forcing it, but it is, yeah. And not disempowering them that they don't right, have the power anything could happen. Yeah. They yeah. could, they could shift on a, mm. on a pinpoint. Right. And yeah. if you open up the space and don't have definition of what will happen, then it allows anything to happen. And that's, I think, the tough thing when we're dealing with family. Their family's so, um, you know, triggering for all of us because we have all these experiences with them and we have patterns of behavior with them and we have experiences with them. That's the most challenging for all of us, I think. And I think that's the purpose of family is to trigger us into letting go of a lot of these things that um, we came to clear out of our energy fields on a, you know, more macrocosmic level. Because and, boy, and on that, on that, do, do you that? have a, any tips for how you like, you know, cause it's, we have all this, yeah, I'm going to be this big when you're actually with the person, like, how do you, mm -hmm. have it just a matter of doing more practice of feeling into the energies and doing what you just described? Like, how do you sort of navigate that when you're with the person and talk, you know, like, do you have any tips? Yeah, doing that's that a really good, gracefully? that's a really good question. No kidding. <laughs> uh, a lot of deep breathing. <laughs> Really, my breath connects me into that space, right? And and so when we do a lot of deep breathing, then it you can feel it shift your body, and and also um, to be conscious of when you're scrambling up and out of your body. Um, really get rooted. I like to connect into the earth a lot. So if I'm going to be in a situation with um, some of my family members that's going to stress me out, like Thanksgiving, you know, everybody coming together, and there's all these different personalities together. You know, I'll go up to my room and I'll just do um, a connection into the earth. I send roots down into the earth and I connect into her energy field. It really anchors me and it pulls me back into my body because I think when, when the wheels fall off the bus for me is when I'm out of my body. <laughs> I'm not connected because like I said, the DNA is this portal into my higher self, my wisdom. So as long as I'm connected and rooted in my body, then I know that I'm going to be accessing my higher self and able to handle any situation that comes my way. So yeah. I get rooted in my body, I breathe, and then I, um, you know, come at it from that calm place. And I just step into that possibility of them behaving in a new and exciting way to surprise me. Yeah. Visualizing, yeah. visualizing them as you want them to be, not as how they are. I mean, that's, that's, exactly. that's the thing yeah. about taking the reins on consciousness. If everything is energy and information and consciousness, then our belief, our thoughts, our memory, our visualization of what is, is affecting, is directly affecting how people interact with us and how we interact with others. And so you know, like I remember a friend of mine, a healer said to me, I'm going to leave my husband and he's going to be really upset and really devastated and blah, blah. And she's telling me this story. And I said, is that what you want to create? Right. Said, no. And I said, well, tell a different story. And she's like, oh, right. Thanks for reminding me. No, he's going to be fine. He'll marry again. He'll be happy. He'll see it. It'll all be good. And that's exactly what happened. So she focused on what she wanted instead of what she thought would happen. But right. Amy's got a question here. And so it's like, because uh, I know Amy's got to go in a minute. I have a question. How do we change? Uh, these family patterns. Well, that is part of the answer, but um, do you want to also address that? Sure. Yeah. So the way that um, has worked um, for me and with, and with clients that I work with is that um, when you step into that space of really allowing them to show up in any way, see what happens between us is that we have all these beliefs and ideas about the way people are, is that what you do is you project energy towards them and then their energy field feels that and then they sort of shrink back or then they deliver up to you, serve up to you, not their best self, but the version, you know, that you might have of them. So the only way to really to manifest and shift difficult situations and relationships with people is to put them, create a new energetic of um, interaction between the two of you, basically. Um, allow them to come towards you because a lot of times when we are in resistance to the people around us, we put up this wall of energy that people are bouncing off of and it doesn't feel very good to them either. So then it puts them on edge and then they interact with you in this way that's out of stress and not in calm, peaceful, loving. And so mm -hmm. it's, that's where we have to really be conscious of what we're projecting ourselves and then really just consciously allow their energy to come towards you so that you can actually feel them. This again, back to the feeling. 
the more you feel into your environment, the more you create new neural synaptic connections in your brain, which we call neuroplasticity, the more you create new scenarios for your life because you're literally rewriting the code in that moment. You're literally rewriting your genetics, your brain activity, your synaptic junctions. You're bringing in different neurotransmitters by feeling into your environment, instead of assuming it, it is a certain way, you are asking what it actually is and then receiving the answer. And then from there, maybe asking another question and receiving a new answer. And then you go off on this whole other journey that takes you into a whole new paradigm of relationship with that person. Yeah, absolutely. Heidi has a great question. She says, as healers, how do we connect with the mantis to start working with them and their healing energy? It's a great question, Lara says. Oh, it it's is. a great question. And I'm just going to add your next question here too. How do I become effective mm -hmm. and efficient at healing myself? What mm -hmm. are the integral practices? And Louise wondering why highly sensitive empathic people can better manage all the inputs coming in. Oh, lots of questions. Okay, let's talk about how do we connect to the mantis if... Um, yeah, I love that because one thing they always tell me is that, you know, I, I serve as a go-between, but by no means am I the, the uh, you know, we're, the age of the guru is dead, right? It's not like I'm the only person that talks to them. They're constantly telling me, they want me to teach people how to interact with them because they are here to support everybody. They're in the earth and they're sending energy up through the earth all the time. So the way that I started connecting with them was that because every time I was working on a client, I would drop into the earth and I would connect into the earth like I just mentioned a few minutes ago and I would get myself centered and grounded into the earth it was while I was in the earth I would start visualizing myself visualizing myself going down into the earth and then before I knew it I was in this room and then in this room there was a table and sitting around this table there was a whole council of beings and then one in particular and that was Mari who I work with most closely and that's how it happened for me. And she's told me that they are um, available to work really with anyone who has the intention of connecting with them. So because they're in the earth dimensional fields and they have great reverence for the earth, um, I would always recommend number one, going through the earth's energy field because it's also protective and it's also balancing. So get yourself protected and balanced and in harmony with the electromagnetics of the earth first. And then what you do is you elevate yourself to the place where your frequency is in alignment with the mantis and you can start interacting with them. Um, one thing I noticed, this is kind of a funny thing that if I'm kind of a little stressed or I'm rushed or I'm hurried, um, sometimes I'll drop into the earth and I'll go into the room and the way they present themselves to me when I'm not on their energy frequency is that they look like this to me. If you can see me, they, they kind of have their backs turned to me and they're doing this. And then, it, oh, oh, right. Okay. Take a few more deep breaths, get myself centered, get myself present moment focused. And then I see them turn around and then they're ready to talk to me. I mean, it's hilarious, but this is what I see, you know, like this. And okay, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, okay, hold on, hold on. You know, because I'm in this third dimensional reality. They're off, you know, in, in multivariant dimensions and it's, you know, they're not dealing with the same density I am. But yet they understand, they're very understanding of it, but at the same time, they're like, okay, we're going to wait for you. Okay, thank you. here's your signal. Get it together, girl. So <laughs> I'll just say that, that you want to be in a really um, calm, connected space and then ask and intend to connect with them and, um, and then you will. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, let's, we'll get, we're going to do it. Okay, we're going to go connect, all of us. Uh, I but... I just want to um, address Yonette's uh, question, how do I become effective and efficient at healing myself? What are the integral practices? What do you want to say about that? Um, so first of all, I think that healing yourself is a process that we start when we start to understand what it is that is bringing us out of balance or putting us into a disease state, right? And that's really understanding all those layers of energy that are creating the environment, whether it be epigenetic or conscious related, whatever it is, you know, they're all, they're all hand in hand. So it's the exploration of your own energetic field that really starts to bear the fruit of getting to the bottom of some of the roots of what it is that's creating the disharmony in your life. So um, for me, that process came about um, understanding things that had happened to me in my childhood and some past lives 
that were energetically apparent to be affecting me in this life. And that all came from doing a variety of things. I mean, I came at it from a, a number of different angles, everything from learning to be a healer and learning different techniques that then I used on myself to um, lots of deep meditations and asking those questions and re-asking and understanding. Sometimes it's hard to get guidance for ourselves. So it does help to connect to um, other aspects of yourself. For example, I connect to the Mantis. I connect to the Arcturians. I connect to another group I call the Divinians. But what I mean I, when I say I connect to them, I really feel like these are aspects of me in another life. And in other words, that I have been Mantis before. I've been Arcturian before. I've been Divinian. That's why I have um, a connection with them. And that's why the information is so seamless to come into me. It's as if I'm speaking to myself in another time, that's why that information is available to me in the field because I resonate with it energetically. The field is full of all of the information that ever has been, right? All of consciousness is encapsulated in the field. But the way I'm interacting with it, the way I'm sampling it has everything to do with my vibration and what I resonate with. And so if you wanna to start to heal the body, like figure out what is it that you resonate with? What feels good to you? What excites you? What are you interested in? Because those are going to be those threads that you can follow into the pathways of understanding yourself better to get the information you need to start ameliorating some of the density in your field. Exactly. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. We've got a few. Um, uh, Louise wondering how highly sensitive, empathic people can better manage all the inputs coming in. I know some get really overwhelmed. Oh, that's a big one. That was my, that was my whole 30s. I was like yeah. going to the supermarket was like hell for me because not only did I feel everybody around me, I felt all the thoughts going into the advertising on the packages of everything. Like it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that is intense. That is super intense. Wow. <laughs> that is really intense. Um, so that's a great question. I, I'm not sure how you um, sort of mitigated all of that. For me, it's been a process of... Um, sort of letting go of my defended heart because um, my heart was very defended. And as a person with a highly defended heart, am I saying that right? Yeah, defended heart, I took everything around me uh, personally and I also took everything around me to be something that I needed to be in resistance to. So I find with energy, when it's in our field, again, when I talk about the way it interacts with your system, my energetic field had this big barrier around it. It was very defended. So anything that kind of bounced up against it, I could feel. And, and it was taxing on me because I felt like I had to have this big structure of um, defense around me all the time. And it was exhausting. And it prevented me from having really close, deep, meaningful relationships with people that would have healed some of my childhood trauma and so what I found that because I was so sensitive and that the things people would say or the energy of the things around me really affected me was that as when I started to drop my defenses, which is ironic because you would think, oh, you need to be defended if everything's coming at you, but it's just the opposite. You need to actually step into a flow of the energy around you and not take it personally, but really understand it in its just face value as opposed to having it mean something. So that's what helped me the most. Absolutely. Everyone's agreeing with you, Heidi. Absolutely. That's the thing about empathic people is they do feel everyone's stuff and then they feel like they need to barrier themselves against it. And so they yep. build up walls and defences. And it's actually the opposite. It's the opposite. Exactly. You have yeah. to raise your vibe, know that everyone is, is an extension of source energy. We're all love and light coming into an intense environment kind of getting knocked around by whatever we're experiencing we've chosen to do that um some are handling it well some are not <laughs> so the, you know have compassion for the ones that are not and that you don't need to defend yourself against anyone or anything in fact the more love you have for them is your right. biggest defense really i mean the more love yeah. you have for everything is you expand Acceptance. your field yeah. and then when their energy comes into your field and you're vibing love it kind of goes whoosh, you transmute their energy it kind of it can't come into you and hit you. So it comes into that energetic field and just gets sort of like washed by love. I don't know, like just trans yeah. by love. And because I have to say, you know, it wasn't until my late 40s that I felt like I could go out into life and feel okay because I felt so much. I felt so much like I stopped going out to pubs and clubs and stuff. 
and I had the work I had to do the work on me I had to just forgive everybody love everything and see it all through the eyes of source see it as the play the Leela see life just see everyone as God just mm-hmm. see everyone as God okay let, let's it's 10 o'clock let's um let's do some stuff Thank you, Jaylene, very much. Oh, too. You guys could reach out to me um, through Facebook or through email. I, I can put my email address up. I'll put a link up for a discounted session. And um, I'm going to be on Beyond the Ordinary. Oh, um, yes. Oh, March goodness. 5th. Yep. And I'm going um, to, and I'm, I've started this something called the Life Vibes Network, which I'm really excited about. It's probably similar to yours, Karen, in that it's a, way for people to come together and to ask me questions and to Absolutely. put information um, out in the field that we can all then uh, benefit from and I can start to interact with with my group and bring that information back and I'm just going to I'm going to be the host and so accessing the information in the quantum field bring it back to everybody yeah. based on information information questions they have so I'll that'll I'll be launching that with the BTO thing in a class um, so yeah that's all happening Okay, so sounds we, like fun. 